Okay, we're back with long division today. Long division with three digit dividends, with or without remainders. It just depends on the situation that we're dealing with. Remember, division means sharing or equal groups. So we like division. Now, if we remember that it's an Oklahoma State standard and it's a common core fourth grade standard, that we know how to do this. Today, by the end of the lesson, we're hoping that you'll be able to say, I can solve division problems with three-digit dividends, with or without remainders using the standard algorithm. Let's get started, though. Let's start with um, 137 divided by 4. So we're going to do 137 divided by 4. Now, the first thing that we like to do is we want to kind of hide these numbers first before we get started. And look at this first digit. Is the 4 greater than the 1? Obviously it is so. So I need to move on to the second number and combine those two. So now we're looking at 13. Is the 4 greater than 13 or less than 13? Well, obviously it is less than 13, so I can divide this without um, getting decimals or fractions, right? Okay, so now I'm going to look at 13 and 13 only. 13, divide 13 in four equal groups, correct? Or I can think in my brain, what times four is close to 13 but does not go over 13? And I know that three times four is 12. So I'm going to put, since I'm looking at 13, I'm going to put 3. Now I divided, I'm saying what times, but that means 13 divided into 4 groups. That's what we're looking at. What times 4 equals 13 or less than 13 and does not go over 13. So I'm doing my division right here. And that is this first step. So 3 times 4, now I'm going to do my multiplying, 3 times 4 equals, what does it equal? Well, of course it equals 12, and I bring that there, and I check off that I did my multiplying. Now I'm going to do my next step, which is subtracting, and I look at this, and I'm thinking, because I'm not looking at the 7, I'm thinking 2 ones from 3 ones. yes, I don't have to regroup on that, 2 ones from 3 ones. I get 1, 1 left. Now remember, in the last lesson, last week, we were talking about if this number is this number or greater, then we did not use a high enough number, okay? So, but this number is smaller. It's less than the 4, so I'm good to go. Okay, so I know I've got a 1, and I still have, I've subtracted, I have a number to bring down. So I bring down my 7 at this time, and I look at the next step, which says repeat. Repeat or remainder, whatever we want it to be at that time. We're going to repeat the steps and go up to divide. Now, often kids will try to divide something in here, but we need to look after underneath that subtraction bar. And I'm looking underneath the subtraction bar, and I'm dividing the 17, correct? Okay, so I've got 17 dividing into four equal groups, and I think in my brain, what times four is close to 17, but does not go over, and because I know my multiplication facts really well, I say, oh, that is six, right? Or six, that is four, because 16 is the answer to that. That's where I was getting at, six. Okay, so we'll say four, four times four. Now that was our division part. Four times four is 16. And now what's my next step after I multiplied four times four? Well, it is subtract. So I'm going to subtract 16 from 17. And what am I going to get? I'm going to get the one left over, right? And now I'm bringing down. Is Do I have anything over here to bring down? No, I don't have anything to bring down. So I should I repeat the process? Well, when I look at one, can I divide that one by four? and get a whole number? No, I'm not going to get a whole number. So I'm going to let that be my remainder because we can use that R as a remainder word instead. So that's going to be 34 remainder 1 and that will be my answer. So let's do one more. Let's try um, 325 by 5. Okay, 325 divided by 5. All right, so the first thing I want to do, once again, is don't look at the other numbers and compare this number to that number. So I'm saying, okay, 
is this larger or is this less than or greater than my divisor? Well, obviously it is less than. So I'm going to move over because I'm going to use, I want whole numbers, right? Okay, so I'm going to move over and make it look like 32 now. And I'm going to compare 32 to 5. Is 32 less than or greater than 5? Well, obviously it's greater than. Okay, all right, so now I'm going to take my 32 and I'm going to think in my brain what times 5 is close to 32 but does not go over 32. Well, I know my 5's really well, so that's why I would say, oh, yay, it is 6, right? So that's my division part, right? So I'm going to check off division and now I'm going to do my multiplication. 6 times 5 is 30. And I check that off, and now I'm subtracting. So if I subtract 30 from 32, I'm going to get a 2. Now, is there something to bring down? Yes, there is. I'm going to put my 5, bring my 5 down. Remember, I'm not going to look anything above my subtraction bar. I'm going to divide this number with this number into five equal groups. Oh, that's an awesome number to, to divide, isn't it? Yes, because we like that number. All right, so 25 divided by five obviously is five because that's a square number and those are my favorites. Okay, five times five is 25. Oh, did you see me? I did it without even thinking. Isn't that great? That's what happens when you be, when division becomes second nature. You know all the steps without even thinking, and that and eventually everybody's going to get to that. Isn't that cool? Okay, so I did my multiplication, and now I'm doing my subtracting. Twenty five from twenty five equals zero. There is nothing left to bring down. There is nothing to divide. So here I have a three digit dividend divided by a one digit divisor, and I get a two digit quotient with no remainder. Okay, so today, after we practice quite a bit, you're going to say, I solved division problems with three digit, digit, digit dividends. Yeah, and with and without remainders, because you're going to get plenty of practice of that. Standard algorithm. Yeah. Okay, so, and but what we're going to do in our journals today is how could I use division? How can use division be used in the grocery store? Well, everybody goes to the grocery store, I hope. Okay, so we, we can actually use division in the grocery store. How can we do that? I want you to write about something that you know, um, something that you can know that you can use division with. Okay, why would knowing long division be important if you worked in construction, maybe? Or give examples of how it could be useful in the workplace, right? Think about your mom or dad, or somebody else that you know, grandma, grandpa, aunts or uncles, or just cousins, or just friends, or neighbors. How would they use division in their, in their, no, don't use school, because we, that's just part of it. Okay, write a long division story problem using three digit dividends with or without remainders. Those are so much fun to get your classmates to solve. Don't we like doing those? I do. I like doing the ones and seeing what you're thinking about. That's a lot of fun. All right, it's time to get busy. Let's get started.